Welcome to the Chemistry, Biology and Math Revision Hub. Today we are doing the Pearson at Excel International A-Level Core Practicals and this is Core Practical 10. This is the part 2 of this experiment. So here I investigate the effects of changing wavelengths on the right of photosynthesis of an aquatic plant. So this is the experimental setup. We have a thermometer to monitor the temperature. We have a light source to provide light for photosynthesis. You guys know photosynthesis is divided into the light dependent and the light independent. The light dependent reactions require sunlight, so we'll need to provide that so that reduced NADP as well as ATP can be produced in the light dependent reactions so that the Calvin cycle can be carried out. So we also have a capillary tubing that is going to be filled with water and as oxygen is produced by the pondweed, it's going to displace some of the water and the produced oxygen is going to be collected using a syringe. So since we have varying wavelength, we need to make sure that the other factors are constant, like the light intensity should be constant. So we'll position aluminum foil on this side to block any unwanted light from coming into contact with our experiment. This ensures that the light is coming from only one source. We also put a specific filter in between the light source and the experimental setup so that we can control the wavelength. Remember, there are many colored light filters that will avail a specific wavelength based on the experimental setup. So my procedure is as follows. You need to place a piece of pond with approximately 10 centimeters long in a large beaker of water. And then you remove bubbles gently by running a finger and thumb over the surface of the pond weed and the water. This is to ensure that there are no bubbles of gas that are going to interfere with our experiment and to ensure that any produced oxygen can leave the pond weed properly. You will cover one side of the beaker with aluminum foil so that the light can only enter the beaker from the other side and add half a spatula of sodium hydrogen carbonate to the water and leave for five minutes. Sodium hydrogen carbonate is going to provide a source of carbon dioxide and for each experiment we have to use the same mass so that we have the same amount of CO2 that the plant is exposed to. Then we'll position the bench lamp close to the beaker with a colorless filter between the lamp and the beaker. This is the position we're talking about. Between the beaker and the light source we need to position a light filter and this is going to provide a specific wavelength. In this situation we are using a colorless filter because this is going to be our control experiment. So I say here this will be a white light control. After doing that, you will allow the pondweed to adjust for about five minutes. And then you fill the capillary tubing of the photosynthometer with water. Water has to be filled in here so that as the oxygen is produced, it comes into the capillary tubing and there will be some displacement of the water. Then place the final end of the tubing in a beaker of water and position the pondweed with a cut end at the top of the final opening. This will ensure that all the oxygen produced at this point comes directly into the capillary tubing so that we do not lose any volume of gas and that means our experiment is going to give us better results. Then attach a paper clip at the opposite end of the pondweed to position its weight correctly. As bubbles of oxygen begin to form and pass through the capillary tubing, you need to start the stop clock. This is done to ensure that we can measure the time for which the experiment has been carried out. And then you use a syringe to collect the volume of oxygen produced in the capillary tube within a specific time. You will need to recall the volume of gas produced, maybe in a table, so that you can be able to repeat experiments and calculate the mean. You will then replace the filter with a filter of a different color and leave for five minutes before you do the experiment again. That is at this point here. Remember in the first point we had a white filter, now we are going to use a different color filter so that the experiment is exposed to a different wavelength and then you will leave for five minutes for the plant to adjust and then you can begin to measure your results. So use the syringe to refill the capillary tubing and then begin to record again. In the next step, using the same pond with apparatus, repeat the experiment with a range of different colored filters and collect the volume of gas produced. Each time you have to collect the volume of gas produced. You could be asked to plot a graph. In this case, you plot the graph of volume of gas produced on the y-axis and the color of the filter used on the x-axis. And as you can see, this could be a bar graph. In this experiment, some variables have to be controlled. You can control temperature using a water bath. Because here we are varying wavelength, temperature has to be constant, so you need to do preliminary experiments in order to know which temperature is going to give you the best results and perform all experiments at that specific temperature and you will use a water bath to ensure that the temperature doesn't change. 
Light intensity can be controlled by positioning the lamp at the same distance while using aluminum foil on the other side. So you will keep the same aluminum foil on this side. And then the used light source is going to be positioned at the same distance. We will just be changing the color filters in order to introduce a new wavelength. And finally, we can control carbon dioxide concentration by using the same mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate. You will perform all experiments using the same chosen mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate. And again, you will have determined this mass in the preliminary experiment to find out which mass you can use so that the volume of carbon dioxide is not limiting the rate of this experiment. In this experiment, we expect the volume of oxygen produced to change as the light intensities change. So this brings us to the end of this video about changing wavelength and how it affects the rate of photosynthesis. In the next video, we're going to look at how changing temperature affects the rate of photosynthesis for the same aquatic plant. Thank you for being with us. Do not forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.